Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another Meaningful Monday. The first Monday of every month is Meaningful Monday. I'm very excited to be here today with you. I'm always excited on the first Monday of the month, but tonight I'm particularly excited because I love this topic. I love it so much that I actually wrote a book about what's in here, um, this moving from ambition to meaning. So for anyone who's new, Meaningful Monday is really about raising people's awareness. And before I carry on speaking, I just want to remind you it is recorded. It's recorded because there are many people in different time zones who can't join. Some people tonight said they can't make it. Please record it. So I do record them and load them onto YouTube. And they've really helped a lot of people. If I may use you, Paul. Hello, Alejandra. Welcome. I mean, if I may use Paul as an example, he listened to some Meaningful Mondays and also said it was useful. So they are recorded. If you're not wanting to take part, that's fine. If you do, please do. I'd love to have your participation. All right. So for the new people, as I said, this Meaningful Monday or all of them is really about raising people's awareness to live a better life, live a full life, a wonderful, charged and rich, fulfilling life, and also to really keep you know pushing the envelope with we are responsible for everything we create in our life and we do create our own reality many people don't think that without the awareness or learning it somewhere i didn't have that awareness myself before 2006 it was only when i watched the movie the secret that i finally or the first time in my life understood that i actually am creating my own reality and was like wow i have this power Yes, yeah, so we like to think we have this power when things go right. And then we don't like to think we have this power when things go wrong. And that just is the case. So life is like school. We're always learning. If you don't learn something, we just got to do it again. And we have to do it again and again until we do learn it. So I love the, the knowing that we create our own reality. And these Meaningful Mondays is to just help you guys cut and polish your experiences in life to learn from them, grow from them, and move better and better up and up from all of them. So tonight, from ambition to fulfillment is really a topic that I'm very, very passionate about. And the reason I'm passionate about it because maybe my own life experience is completely different today where I'm living a life of purpose and fulfillment compared to what it was a few years ago. And the truth is that it was before my brother was 21. His name is John Marco. He passed, he passed on in 2012. And before that, I can honestly admit, um, you know, humbly and honestly and transparently that I was highly ambitious living a life like a mouse in a corporate treadmill, going after goals and achievement and even though, you know, I was hitting and hitting and scoring some goals, I never really lived a fulfilling, a fulfilling life. So this is why I want to talk about the subject so much, because it might be the case for other people or people that you know. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it is you. If it's not you, I can assure you there are people in your life that you know who are in a high state of ambition or chasing I don't know what it is that we're chasing. We're chasing something, some level of success we want to get to. And we just, life is slipping right through our fingers like a handful of sand that slides through your fingers like beach sand. And the next thing we know, our 20 years or 30 years have passed and we haven't really lived our lives. We've just existed. So I don't want that for anyone. And that's the purpose for tonight's um, webinar. So as they recorded, if you do know anyone who this may help or serve, or raise some awareness, please do share it with them. Okay, so let's begin. Um, ambition is not a bad thing. Ambition is a good thing because it motivates us. So ambition is a good thing because it continuously causes us to ask questions about what do we want next, get clear on where we're going, start to think about how we need to get there, you might consider the skills and um, personal development that we need, you know, to acquire in order to get these things that we want. So in that regard, it's really good. So I'm not um, saying anything's wrong with ambition. What I am saying is sad is when there's the lack of 
meaning and fulfillment in a living and ambitious life. So here it says, success without <coughs> fulfillment is a loss. And I really, really mean this. Success without the feeling of fulfillment in your life is a waste of life. And true success really lies in a highly fulfilling and happy life. Someone join on the phone. Welcome, um, whoever that is. Uh, so coming back to this idea of success without fulfillment is a loss. Now, what is success is the first question. So success and the definition of success is different for everybody. You can ask a thousand people, what is the definition of success? And I can promise you, you're probably going to get a thousand different answers. So I'll just share some assumptions here. So if this is not you, forgive me, but it, um, it may be or it may be not. Success, when I was very young, in my 20s, was all about achieving and acquiring. The two A's, achieving, acquiring, acquisition. How much money can I earn? Can I buy a better home or better car or better things? And can I get the next promotion? Can I get the next increase? It was all about my own success. Now, I'm not saying that's everyone. Today, I'm going to tell you what my definition of success is because I want to share it with you. And if you like it, maybe adopt it as yours. I never came up with this. I'm not the genius on this one. I learned this from John Maxwell, being part of the John Maxwell team um, for about six years now, seven years actually. And I learned this from him. And this is really and truly my definition of success today. Success for me today is number one, knowing your life purpose. Secondly, it's growing to your maximum potential. Number three, it's what I call sowing seeds in others. What I mean by that is what I learn, I want to pour into other people. I want to take all the fruits that have, you know, grown off my tree of personal development and take the seeds of my fruit and plant them in others so that they too may grow into fruit in other people's lives and hopefully when they grow fruit in their lives, this, those people there will take the seeds of their fruit and plant it in other people's lives and so on and so on to make this world a better place. So as I said, success for me today is knowing my purpose, growing to my maximum potential and sowing seeds in others. So if you think about it in that definition, you couldn't imagine a life like that that wasn't fulfilling. It is fulfilling. There are many definitions of success. So when there is no fulfillment in your life, what I'm really saying is there's no true understanding of our life purpose. No fulfillment means there's no real knowledge or just this inner knowing of why we actually hear and what contribution we are making or if we are making a contribution, is that contribution in alignment with our own personal values? Because I was making a contribution as an example in my corporate job. Let's just give you an example. I was making a contribution for the company. I was making a contribution to the fast moving consumer goods industry or the retail industry. However, that contribution was not in alignment with my personal values. There were quite a few things that I didn't value about the fast moving goods, cons fast moving consumer goods industry, yet I was servicing that industry, working 10 to 12 hours a day, sometimes more than five days a week, and it wasn't really in line with my values. So that's really important. So true success is when we have fulfillment, meaning and purpose, and what we are doing, what we are contributing is in alignment with our personal values. That's really, really important. So I'll just say this up front to make sure I don't miss saying this at all in the webinar tonight. Is values are so important that any relationship where your values are not in alignment 
with the other party's values, it will come to an end eventually. It'll either come to an end quickly or it will come to an end slowly. So if you're not in alignment with values with your partner, that relationship will come to an end. Whether it's a marriage, it'll end in divorce. If it's not in alignment with your employer, you will end up leaving there or resigning or moving on or manifesting a retrenchment. If you're not in alignment with the values of any friends you have, that friendship will not last. So any relationship that you have when you're not in alignment with values, it's a time bomb. It will eventually, you'll eventually part ways. So I say this because values are so important. And when it comes to our lives and our careers, and I have to say these words, whatever job you're in or whatever you're doing, you're trading your life for that. You're trading your life for whatever job you're doing. So it's good to take stock and ask, is this in alignment with my values? And do I go to sleep every night with a sense of fulfillment and meaning and wake up every day excited and charged because I have a strong, clear purpose. If you do, wonderful. And I'm happy for you. I really, truly am. And I wish you all the blessings in the world. And what I ask is that you share your experience with others and help them too, especially young people and children, to think about purpose and fulfillment. And if it's not your experience, then this webinar is going to help you tonight. So stay tuned. Let's look at ambition. Ambition is a strong desire to do or achieve something. Ambition is the desire to achieve something or to succeed accompanied with motivation, determination, and this internal drive. It keeps us going. It's a burn inside. Ambition describes those that achieve success based on their inner desire to do so and their belief in themselves. Okay, so that's ambition. It's a good thing. It keeps us moving forward. It motivates us. So if you lack ambition, that's not a good thing. We need to be ambitious. So if you lack a bit of ambition, here are some things that may help you. Number one, set goals for yourself. Know what you want to achieve and make sure that you're going to go after them. The next thing is invest in, your, in yourself. Do courses, do personal development, read books. Expand your mind, expand the vision you have of not only yourself, but the world you live in, especially person development books. Eliminate neg negativity in your life. Hang around with positive people. They'll make you more happy. They'll encourage you. Take risks in your life. That sounds a bit strange maybe, but we do need to take risks because ambitious people take risks. I don't mean take extremely uncalculated risks that, you know, put you in a compromised position. I mean, take a certain degree of calculated risks where you say, you know what? I bet on myself. I bet on this decision that I've made. Go for it. You'll learn something if it doesn't work out. And if it does work out, great. You've taken a chance to better yourself and good things have happened. And if you've bumped your head and it hasn't worked, great. You've learned something. And the other thing is with um, um, how to become more ambitious is don't wait. The best um, <laughs> expression I can use for this is my mentor, Paul Martinelli, he always used to say to me, Janine, preparation's overrated. I used to get onto calls with him and ask him about um, a presentation that I wanted to do that's in two weeks' time and I'm going to book the date when. And he said, stop, 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 stop. He said, just book. Don't ask me about that. Just book the date and you'll be as necessary and prepared as you need to be on that day. But if you're going to keep preparing, keep preparing, keep preparing, and when you feel prepared, then set the date. He said, you're going to take two years to get started, lovey, when you could take just two weeks. So that's the truth. Don't wait. Take a step forward, even if you're not ready. That's the best way to learn. And then, of course, surround yourself with ambitious people. They'll surely help um, charge you up a bit more. Right. Now, that's all the good side to ambition. Now, the downside to ambition is this which I don't even have to explain. We all know that donkey with a carrot. Now, why I'm having this webinar tonight, because this is such an important topic for me that I want to share with all of you and hopefully add value with this point, is that if we only live for ambition and achievement and acquisition, like I was all about in my 20s, you will be chasing that carrot that you'll never, ever get to taste 
until you die. You're going to chase that carrot, chase that carrot, chase that carrot, chase it all the way to your grave, and then bloop, it's the end. And this is the problem with the paradigm of a materialistic world. All the marketing and advertising in the media keep giving us a message that you've got to have this to be happy. You've got to take that holiday to be happy. You've got to have that wedding, that partner, that dress, that car, that home, all these things. And we chase these things. Whereas life doesn't have to be that way. So I want to share with you how right now, right today, staying ambitious, you can feel fulfilled every single day so that when you do come to the end of your life, you never get this feeling like, when was I ever going to feel happy? When was I ever going to feel satisfied? I don't want that to be you. So always remember that Whatever we do acquire, the minute we acquire it, we are going to birth a new desire for more. It's automatic. And that's okay. That's how human beings are designed. And it's, it's a good thing because we are here to expand and express more of ourselves. So desire keeps us moving forward. Ambitious keeps us going forward for more and for better. But it's not the only mindset to have. When I get this, I'll be happy. When, that's not the only mindset. The mindset we need to have is, what am I doing and how am I feeling today? And more than anything, what contribution am I making to make this world a better place? Because it's in our contribution to making this world a better place that we get the highest form of fulfillment and our lives have the most meaning. When we live just for ourselves, sure, you can be happy. It's wonderful. I know what it feels like. I've enjoyed material things myself. But when you get to add value to others in a very meaningful way and change their lives, there is nothing that's more satisfying and more fulfilling. And it doesn't have to be a thing on a grand scale where you're changing millions of lives and you're a famous person like Oprah Winfrey. It can just be a conversation that you have with a friend who's maybe depressed or maybe even admits that they could have had suicidal thoughts and the conversation you had with them changed their life. That's meaning. It could be a child who's got no self-confidence. Maybe your child. Maybe somebody else's child. And the conversation that you have and that you tell them how to believe in themselves changes the course of their life. That's fulfillment. That's meaning. So it doesn't have to be in a big scale. It's everything we do minute for minute. So let's look at fulfillment now. We've looked at ambition. Fulfillment is to realize, to achieve, or to put into effect. This is like a dictionary definition. It's the achievement of something desired, promised, or predicted, and the feeling of it being worthwhile. It's a feeling of significance, of relevance, of meaning, and it being purposeful. So where has got this word significance? I just want to quickly quote John Maxwell here. John Maxwell says, success is all about me. Significance is all about others. And once you've tasted significance, success will never satisfy you again. And I think that that's what it's about. And when it comes to significance, and it is all about others and helping others, that's when our lives have the most meaning. Okay. Now, this quote I got from um, this particular guy named David Emma Land, not that he's very famous or anything, but I found this and it just brought me to, my, to a standstill when I read it. I'm going to read it out loud. It says, everyone is driven by the need to fill their life with meaning. Sometimes this need is articulated clearly and then a purpose emerges and that leads to a sense of direction and a sense of mission. Most times it is not. So the void is filled with action. People have kids, get mortgages, raise families, pay bills, go to work each day without asking, why am I doing this? And then someday they die. Now that's not a very happy picture. He says, sometimes all of this is enough. Many times it is not. It's action that, that fills the void nicely. 
more and more action. It makes each day feel tiring. But without a sense of purpose, without a sense of vision, it leads to a pattern of behavior that doesn't lead anywhere. Most times we die before we're realizing this, of course. Now, that's quite a confronting paragraph or two there. Well, it was for me. Quite confronting. And it's very true. And you know that I couldn't see my own life look just like this before 2012. That was me. I couldn't see this. If someone even had to tell me about it, I would deny it. I, I really would. And I would say, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm in a career. I know what I'm doing. I'm you know, building my profile, building my career. But it was only until I lost my younger brother that the things that I valued the most became apparent and I knew what I really wanted to focus on in my life and it changed everything. And this, as it's written here now, speaks differently to me. And I'm not really that excited about just action and more action and more action. It is tiring. But what's not tiring, what's energizing, what's highly thrilling and exciting is having a strong sense of purpose as to what your contribution is. And that's what this webinar is really about. So a few steps to happiness and fulfillment. As I said, hold on to your values. I've spoken about values and how important it is for our values to be aligned with whatever job we're doing, whatever mission we're on. So whatever you find true, whatever you know in your life to be fair, whatever you believe in, those are your values. And over time, the more you honor them and the more you stay true to yourself and your values, the better you'll feel about yourself, the more self-worth you have. So also be aware of what kind of people you hang around with. I can tell you all these people that are on this webinar tonight, I know all of you, and I can tell you that we do have similar values. I know you, you know me. And it's really important that around your other friendship circles, wider than um, just us here tonight, be around with people whose values are similar to yours. It's really important. The second thing is accept the good. So look at your life, take stock of what's working. Don't push away something just because it's not perfect. When good things happen, even little good things, celebrate them, let them in, be grateful for them, express appreciation, maybe keep a gratitude journal and always you know, be very aware of all the good things, even the small good things that are in your life. The next one is imagine the best for yourself. Visualize success. So on point number three, I'm going to say to you this, dream big. Don't have small dreams. Don't be afraid to look at, you know, what you really want. Go for it. See yourself getting it. Visualize it. You know, many people don't dream big because they don't want to disappoint themselves if they don't achieve it. I'm saying dream big anyway. There's a saying, shoot for the stars or shoot for the moon because even if you miss, you land amongst the stars. So do dream big. Don't worry whether you'll get there or not. Just dream big and go for the big because it takes as much energy going for that as going for small. Okay, number four. Listen to your heart. You are the only person who knows what really makes your heart beat faster, what you really, really love, what fills you up. You know, your family and friends may think that you'd be great at something potentially or that something's really good for you or meant for you. But if it doesn't float your boat and it's not really what you want, be honest enough with yourself to not try and do anything that doesn't, that just to do it to please other people. Do what's true to you. And just be smart. If you think that you want to listen to your heart, maybe your heart is like, I know someone that just want to get out of their job and do something totally different. Um, like an arty expression and they're right now in a very left brain corporate style work and they just want to jump ship just have, just just be smart keep your day job for the time being and maybe transition yourself in a progressed step-by-step -step methodical way just in case you ever get doubts that things aren't working out as quickly as they should and you don't want to start having negative thinking and worrying about money or things so always try to incorporate your passion wherever you are right now and just expand it more and more and everything will work out for you. It will come to you. The next thing is find your purpose. This has got to be the most important point 
of this entire hour that we're together. So, um, oh, that's find your purpose. The one before this, two things you love, I'll come to that. So find your purpose. When it's talking about find your purpose, when people believe that they're contributing to the well-being of humanity, I don't know how this thing keeps moving. Sorry. Um, that is when they feel the best about their lives. When you know that what you're doing makes a contribution to help this world be better, there is nothing that comes close to that feeling. It's the most fulfilling. Everybody really wants to be part of something greater than themselves, some much bigger purpose. So keep that in mind. And if you don't know where to start, just start by being intentional about helping others. You know, we do have to really be intentional about adding value because I'm just generalizing. I could be wrong. may not be all of you. But we all born as children, like naturally selfish. We care about ourselves. And we, as we grow up, we learn to really help others add value, be unselfish. So the more intentionally we live, the more we experience that. I mean, talk about helping strangers, adding value to people at work who are not in your um, area of management or leadership. They some, they're a colleague maybe or a peer or someone in a different department. If you could help them, don't walk on by. If you see something that they need, stop and, and do that. And just these small little acts of kindness and bit by bit start to create in us this wonderful feeling. And all we want to do is then look for more and more of it and do greater things. Just jumping back to number five, do the things you love. Definitely do the things you love. Find your passion. Some people don't know what their passion is. And this is not a joke. I've, I've actually had a person who was looking for their life purpose and we were talking about passion. And they said to me, I don't know what I'm passionate about. It's possible. Many people are like that. If that's the case, experiment. Try new things. Open, your up and, open yourself up and say yes to all kinds of invitations. And you just got to try a whole lot of things until you really find your passion. Also think about what you did as a child, what you loved as a kid. Um, think about what people compliment you for. And passion is so important because there's a saying that says, in your passion lies your God-given purpose. Okay, number seven, push yourself, not others. You know, it's easy to feel that someone else is responsible for your fulfillment or my fulfillment. But the reality is that it's really no one's responsibility except ourselves. And once you realize this, then you get the power to really go where you want to go in your life. We stop blaming people. We stop being victims. We take 100% responsibility. The next thing is being open to change. Change doesn't always feel good depending on the person and what the change is. Many people resist change. It's actually inherent in human behavior to resist change to a degree. So we have to actually condition ourselves or... Um, Talk to ourselves about being open to change. Because the truth is the only constant in life is change. Change is going to happen regardless. This world is continuously changing. So we do need to make contingency plans or set ourselves up emotionally for when things do change so that we can experience any change with a, like a feeling of surrender, a feeling of acceptance, a feeling of faith that we know that things will work out for us. Actually, it's quite funny talking about surrender. Um, today, we were on the radio for the very first time, myself and my friend, Claire Williamson. We started a, a radio show called The Meaningful Monday Show. And today's topic was about surrender. And if any of you want to really understand surrender, it's something I, I never understood properly until I read a book a few years ago called The Surrender Experiment by Michael A. Singer. I don't have it next to me. Otherwise, I'll pick it up and show it to you. It's a blue cover. And the Surrender Experiment by Michael Asinger really, really shifted something inside me. Um, it mentioned two other books that I read, one of them being Autobiography of a Yogi, which significantly changed my life. Um, so I recommend to any of you, um, when it comes to being open to change, to maybe consider reading the Surrender Experiment. It will absolutely help you deal with things not working out your way in life. No matter how big they are, how small they are, it used to be me when things didn't work out the way I wanted them to. I used to say and feel I had to control everything. I used to waste so much energy. It was so exhausting trying to control all the conditions and circumstances in my life. And now it's like, yep, that's meant to happen that way. I'm meant to learn something or I'm being guided down another path. 
It's a completely different experience today, but it, uh, that book really did change it for me. The number nine is bask in the simple pleasures. When I mean simple pleasures, I mean always remember about the people that you love, the people that you treasure. Spend time with them. Think about things or treasured memories you have. Do more of those things. Have fun. Make silly jokes. Be playful. Mess around with your friends or family or hang out with children. Enjoy simple things like walking in nature and noticing things with a high level of intention. Even looking up at a starry night, saying, wow, you know, looking at a sunrise or a sunset or just the sky in the day and just saying, wow, those bask in the simple pleasures. It helps us develop an intentional um, sense of awe and wonder. There's just a bit of noise on the phone. I'm going to mute a few lines. Okay, if you want to speak, just unmute your line. I've just muted some because there was some background noise. Okay. As many of you do know, I have written this book called Living in the Flow, and I just wanted to touch on something because this idea of going from amb ambition to fulfillment and finding a purpose is so important and valuable to me in my life and my experience that this book that I've just published is all about that. It's a guide to discovering your purpose and your value in this world. So I wanted to share out of the book a few things. The one is this, the saying by Mark Twain. He says, the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you know why you were born. You really need to know your purpose, everybody in this world. And if you don't, I want to encourage you to sit down in silence, maybe meditate and think deeply into the question, why am I here? What is the true meaning of my life? When I was in corporate, I thought it was that, but it's, it's, that's a corporate agenda. That's not the meaning of my life. So what is the meaning of, it could be in what you're doing in your job. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just speaking for myself here. But it really is important that we know why we were born. Because once we have a purpose, our whole lives change. We see the world through a different lens. And I just want to say, purpose is different from finding the job that makes you happy. It's not about finding the job that makes you happy. I thought that that was, and I've changed, I've changed careers over my 20 years in corporate. But it's not just that. Purpose is less about what you want, and it's more about what you give. Purpose always relates to others. It's a contribution that we make to the world. So in my book, one of the chapters is called Living on Purpose, and this comes out of the, that chapter. It says, living on purpose means that you have an intention to serve others. This intention to serve is what gives you the motivation and inclination to develop and use more of our potential. It requires you to go beyond just your needs. And this is why you were born. Yes, you were born for a specific purpose. So once we get a bigger sense of purpose to add value to others and not just serve our own self-indulged ambitions, it's a wonderful thing because it causes us to grow without a choice. We have to grow because we have to be bigger than what we just need for ourselves. And this helps develop more of our potential. And as I said in the beginning, success is those three things. Knowing your life purpose, growing to your maximum potential, and then sowing seeds in others, adding value to others. So this really kind of sums it up. And once we have a purpose, it's then very easy to develop a vision for our lives, which we all need. This saying comes from the Bible, but it could be from anywhere. And it's very true. Without a vision, the people perish. Now, it may mean that they die, but it doesn't have to mean. It could mean that they live lost. They live lost without a purpose, without a vision for their lives, without clear goals on where they want to go. So without a vision, the people perish. If anyone's read the book called... A Man's Search for Meaning by Dr. Viktor Frankl. About, he was a psychiatrist in the concentration camps during the Second World War in Auschwitz. And the whole book, A Man's Search for Meaning, is the premise that people, when they never had a vision for their lives, they thought they were going to stand 
relationships, the war would never end. They literally died. They just died from a loss of hope. And he was telling this part in the book when it was just before Christmas on the one particular year, and they told them that peace would be declared on Christmas Day. And he said the minute they made that announcement, it was a few days before Christmas, these men, thin as can be, completely malnutritioned and, and, and suffering from frostbite and, um, you know, unhealthy. They were so thin. They got rosy cheeks. The, the eyes lit up just with a knowing that they were going to be declared on Christmas Day. And then what happened was Christmas Day came and they never declared peace. And he said literally on the 26th of December, a whole lot of men were dead in their beds. They died from hopelessness because they so expected the war to end and them to be free. And it wasn't the news they got. And they literally died of a loss of hope. So this is so important. Without a vision, the people perish. How many people do we know when they hit retirement, they start to age quicker? It's because they've lost their purpose. So your purpose is nothing to do with your career. Your purpose is to do with the contribution that you make somehow, somewhere in this world. And I just want to keep raising this awareness, if it's not what your life is right now, to really make it your number one goal is to find the reason why you were born, what contribution you want to make. And remember, it's your, it's your mission. It's not something written in the stars that you've got to go find. It's the mission you give yourself. And if you are living your purpose, please raise awen this awareness with people that you know, that you love, that you care about. Especially children. Talk to them about um, what purpose they have being here because we do have a purpose. All of you have a purpose and you have a lot of value. So in the book, the first part is your highest priorities. And I just talk about these big three things that I say are a person's true highest priorities, not the priorities that you know, I thought I had when I was in my 20s. The true priorities are things like having an awareness of our constant connection to source energy or spirit or infinite or God, whatever name you give it. The second one is to find your purpose. The third one is to develop your intuition. Now, as these cross over, you can see there is living on purpose, which I just briefly explained, living a guided life, living with faith. And if all of that happens together, that's living in the flow. However, that's not where it ends. That's not when we have everything that we meant to have or be or do in this life. That's just part one. Part two is where fulfillment really comes in, and that's living beyond yourself. So the, the book in part two has only got three short chapters. And the first one is living fully by serving others, and we've spoken about that. And that's really where your life starts to have what we call significance, no longer success, but significance. The second part is about healing yourself and others. And that's literal and um, abstract. Literal, I tell you that you can heal yourself and others and how we do that. And abstract in the sense that love, unconditional love, and unconditional love for ourselves, it's what's healing. We can heal conditions of illness with unconditional self-love. And of course, love for others and forgiveness. And the last one, living your legacy. Well, living your legacy um, plays into everything that we've discussed. Oops. Everything that we've discussed tonight. Because if you have a purpose and you live a life of significance and you do add value to make this world a better place, that is your legacy. And there's nothing better than knowing when you leave this world one day that you left this place better than when you arrived and you made the light, the load lighter for others or things better for other people. And that's really what ambition to fulfillment is really about. So in the silver method, so many of you have done the silver method on this call, not all of you, but some of you and many people who will listen to the recording would not have done it. In the silver method, we have uh, on day three out of the four days, an exercise on purpose. And I just want to share some of the quotes. These are the slides from the actual course. It says, the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of your life is to give it away. Your gift, or your talents, the, your talents and gifts that you've been given and the things that you do well and the things that, that you love to do, your passions. It says here, chase your passions 
and money will come. Chase money and you may never find your passions. And I don't want that for anyone because that's not living a fulfilling life. It says you're turning your passion into your job is easier than finding a job that matches your passion. And I have to say this too, and this is how it was in my own life. I was always going every five or six years into a different job. Even though I loved it and I was learning, I did love it. I kept having this niggly feeling there's got to be more to life than this. And it was because of that thing. It wasn't my true purpose and it wasn't my true passion. So looking for a job that really holds that passion and it's infinite, it never dies, is much harder. Just go after your passion and you'll find that it all works out. The things you're passionate about are not random. They are your calling. They are absolutely linked to your purpose, the reason why you are here. The things that you're passionate about are your blessings for you to bless others. So here, just to tell you what we do on day three in the Silver Method, there's this exercise called Connection to Purpose. It's a vision exercise. We go into a deep state of meditation, really deep, between alpha and theta, which is a high, um, very good state to access a subconscious mind. And in that deep state, we ask these questions. We first tune into source energy. And then with our mind, we ask source energy questions like this. What is your vision for my purpose in life? And then there's this long silence and you sit in the class with a pen and paper in your hand and whatever comes up for you, you don't judge it or analyze it, you just write it down. You have amazing results from this. You start the process of guiding them towards their purpose in life. And I include myself in this. I'm not saying you get your life purpose answer right in the meditation. You may, but generally not. But you do plant the seed in your subconscious mind and I can promise you it just needs to start to germinate which it will and as time goes by slowly but surely your awareness will change you'll notice things you'll become more aware of your passions of things that you love to do and you'll be guided your intuition will guide you and you will come across your life purpose which is really the most important thing for you to live a fulfilling life um, we also have in the same meditation some questions later on that ask things like, what must I release or what must I embrace? It's a long pause for people just to let anything bubble up from deep in, within them. And that's really about uncovering our limiting beliefs. You'll be absolutely astounded the answers people get when these questions are asked in a deep, deep state of meditation. What limiting beliefs show up for them? And then they can be aware of them. Once you know what limiting beliefs are holding you back or not serving you, you can then address them and change the course of your life. Because the truth is, your limiting beliefs are the things that are holding you back from living to your maximum potential. So I hope that's been helpful. I've got these quotes here that I just want to inspire you with. It says, any dream is possible if you have courage. Courage is a state of mind. You can... You can, how can I say, you can motivate yourself into a state of courage. If you don't feel you've got courage, you can read 20 quotes a day or 20 affirmations a day on courage and you'll get a feeling of courage. So it's actually something that you can develop in yourself. It's like a state of mind. It tells you, your life has purpose. Your story is important. Your dreams count. Your voice matters. You were born to make an impact. And it's true, you were born to make an impact. There's a reason why you're here. And the most successful people follow passion, not paychecks. I love this. It's such a good awareness that it's really not about the job and the promotion and the paycheck. It's about our passion. What are you really passionate about? And do that thing somehow, some way in your life incorporated, even if it's not fully in a small way, but just make sure that you're always feeding your passion. This is one of the most wonderful quotes by James Allen, who's the author of As a Man Thinketh. It says, to begin to think with purpose is to enter the ranks of those strong ones who only recognize failure as one of the pathways to attainment. So can you see when you have purpose, you won't let failure stop you. 
because it's not about the failure or success. It's about the mission you're on. It's about the purpose. The purpose is bigger than you. It drives you. It holds you. It keeps going. It's pulling you. And you will go through good times and bad times, successes and failures, when you have a strong sense of purpose because you know why you're here. And then you change your mindset about failures and you don't call them failures. Like he says here, we begin to recognize failure as just one of those pathways towards success, towards attainment. Because we learn that any failure is, first of all, temporary. And secondly, it's full of lessons to teach us something. No matter who you are, no matter what age you are, you are never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. To give you proof of this, Louise Hay, the founder of Hay House, which is the biggest self-development publishing house in the world, found her purpose at 61 and was at the peak of her career at 80. She wrote her last book at 90 and passed at 92. So you are never too old. Never let that be a limiting belief that you are too old to start a whole new thing if you're not living your purpose right now. Banish the thought. Find the courage and live your best life. So my really strongest wish for all of you is that you manifest a future that is by design rather than by default. I've got some options here just to tell you what I'm doing. If you want to join and jump on board, we're right now busy with a Think and Grow Rich Mastermind. Um, Aleandro, who's on this call right now tonight, I've just put her on mute. She's in the current mastermind we're in. Aleandro, you want to just say what you think of the current mastermind? If you don't mind me putting you on the spot. Yes, well, hello, good evening to everybody. Uh, I really think, you know, it's a fantastic thing and I strongly recommend it to do it because, uh, I don't know, in my case, it's helping me a lot really to think about different aspects of my life. And uh, so I really recommend it. And Janine is a fantastic, uh, you know, leader in this uh, course. Thank you, Alejandra. So we are into week, we've just finished week five. And we're going into week six of the current mastermind. I've got another one coming up at the end of June. You don't have to be in Sydney. You can be anywhere in the world, really, because you can join by Zoom or in the room. So we do have we do meet in the room every week with about five of us. And the rest, like Aleandra, is in Canberra. She dials in and other people as well. Why I talk about Think and Grow Rich in this context of ambition to fulfillment, if you don't really know the book Think and Grow Rich very well, you might think this is contradictory to what I'm saying because think and grow rich is all about money, wealth, and um, being materialistic. It's the very opposite. Think and Grow Rich is a highly spiritual book, it's probably the best personal development book ever written in the world, except for the one I also think by Jose Silva. And it talks about think, which is the mind, the brain, the subconscious mind, intuition, grow. It's all about personal growth having persistence, having faith, things like that. And of course, rich, rich in every area of our life. I have to say, there's no point in being rich money-wise if we're poor spiritually. There's no joy or fulfillment in that. So Think and Grow Rich is a rich life spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, and of course, yes, of course, money-wise as well. So that's that. And also, obviously, the, um, the Silver Method 4-Day Training has got in the four days, two days on intuition, which will help guide your life to find your life purpose and a life purpose exercise as well. Okay, so that's just um, the book that we're studying and we do worksheets and things like that. Just want to read this quote and remind you that Think and Grow Rich doesn't just mean money. It says that if you're one of those that believe that hard work and honesty alone will bring you riches, perish the thought. It's not true. Riches, when they come in huge quantities, are never the result of hard work. Riches come, if they come at all, in response to definite demands based on the application of definite principles, not by chance or luck. So the book's about 13 principles that if you apply them, and I love them because you'll never forget the 13 principles, you dig so deep, they'll serve you in any area of your life. It doesn't have to be about money, any area. It's the same 13 principles. So just to tell you, it starts on the 27th of June. It's eight weeks. The price is $249 for the eight weeks. Um, you can join by signing up on my website if you want to jump in. The only space for 
um, 10 people. So if you do want it, please do jump in. And Aleandra, sorry, just to talk about this now, your two friends, if they want to join, please ask them to book sooner so that they definitely get a, a chance to join if, they, if that's what they want. Um, and then the next Silver Method class is in September, four days, a Thursday to a Sunday, 12 to 15. And the next one after that is over two separate weekends with a gap in the middle. That's November 9, 10 and 23, 24. For those who've never done the Silver Method, you're welcome to go to the website of mine, Silver Method Australia, and just read up about it. But I want to mention two things. Once you've done it, you can review for free and limited for the rest of your life. People like Aleandra on this call has reviewed a few times um, in her life. And I, I have to say, I, I know her. And um, what, uh, you know, if I may speak about you, um, you really have a lot of success, a very good mindset, a very balanced and centered um, experience in life. And, you know, it's just a pleasure to know people who have done and reviewed the Silver Method. So you can review for free for the rest of your life. And there's, of course, a money back guarantee. There's also a kids class for 8 to 12 year olds. The only prerequisite is at least one parent needs to be a silver graduate. So if anyone does have kids or thinking about putting them in the class, please join the September class that at least one parent's a graduate to um, fulfill the requirement to put your kid through the October class. Okay, so that's that for Meaningful Monday. I just want to open the lines. Are there any questions or what did you think of the lesson? Was it helpful? Any ideas? Anything you want to share? I want to hear from you. So please just talk. Don't wait for someone. Go ahead. And if you can't, and Eva, you on um, mute. I can't unmute you. Malcolm, you're on mute. You need to unmute yourselves. The rest of you, oops, sorry. Um, I think your lines are unmuted. Any comments from anyone? No? Anybody want to add anything? Anybody looking for purpose or found their purpose? Want to just share your experience? No? Yes? Not sure if you can hear me, Janine. Yes, Paul. Go ahead. I can hear you. Oh, can you can. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've been looking for my purpose. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, just like I um, uh, wrote in one of my messages over to you, I, I'm really confused about it. At this ripe age of 52, I just, I thought I knew what it was, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm, you know, at the minute, I, I'll, I'm just going to try some of your techniques and um, see how I go. But yeah, I'm... I don't know if I if I can ever find it. <laughs> it seems important from what you say, but yeah, it's just not happening for me. Not sure why. Well, let me just say, the fact that you have an awareness that you're not sure of what your purpose is and that you, you think you maybe haven't found it yet, let me just put it that way, that you're unsure, is a massive step in itself because it's from awareness that we can move forward. If some people don't have the awareness. I never had the awareness that I never knew my life purpose. I didn't even know what the term meant. I used to be honestly a little bit irritated when I heard people talk about life purpose because I didn't know what it meant. I, I never had it in my life. I thought it was just some esoteric thing. And it was through a tragic event of losing my brother that led me to say, whoa, what is life about? Why am I here? What am I doing with my life? He, he was here, then he died. He was 21. What if I die tomorrow? And it was that deep cross, that deep reflection in a crossroads of my life that brought me there. Now, that doesn't have to be you. That doesn't have to be your experience. You don't have to have a sudden, drastic, and tragic event to shake you to say, what is my life purpose? Just your awareness that you're not sure what it is or you want to find it is a huge step in itself. So be grateful for that. Honor yourself for that. Tap yourself on the back that you've even been able to admit that. Once you're there, I can say to you this. If you want to know what is your true life purpose, you will find it. You will get the answers. Now, there are, of course, steps and techniques. The silver method is one 
definitely that as a very powerful exercise. It plants seeds deep in the subconscious mind. And also in the last exercise on the last day is what we call sowing the seeds of purpose. And we revisit that again, that life purpose exercise, replant more ideas and thoughts and seeds in the subconscious mind. And when we develop our intuition, our, our life will guide us. So I have to say this, do not give up hope. If you want to find it, you will. We also have in the silver method, which you know, because you've done it, Paul, um, is the laboratory and counselors. You could use that in many ways as well to help guide you on the steps and on the path if you're not sure that you found your life purpose yet or not. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you know what I, what I need to say? Uh, I'm really glad that I could uh, listen to you to, tonight because uh, I, I really thought that the purpose and the job, <laughs> what I do, that it's, uh, you know, like you said, it's not actually the same. You know, whatever you do, you do, but your purpose could be something completely different. So um, the biggest source of confusion for me is, or has been, that whenever, you know, I can meditate, you know, I can, I can uh, create things but I have got no control as to when it happens it happens sometimes at other times it doesn't happen so in deep you know meditation and whatnot I, I I'm not sure if you read my latest messages I I had a you know doing what I do imagining that I am doing what I do I felt an overwhelming kind of you know emotion that I that I had maybe once in my life before. So I thought, well, that must be it. But you know, Janine, that this this job is just not happening for me. And years go by and by and by. I am thinking, well, that's my purpose. I do whatever I can to get to it. But it's still not happening. So what what do you make out of that? So maybe the Life purpose is somewhere completely, you know, it's a different thing. It could be something I have no idea what it is at the minute. What do you think, Janine? So I think the, the question we need to just stick with is what am I passionate about? That's the, because in your passion lies your God-given purpose. It's what you're passionate about. Yeah. And um, I don't have enough time to go through in all the depth, but yeah, there, no, that's fine. That's fine. There's definitely, yeah. um, there's definitely things that could help. There's like questionnaires and worksheets to think through and um, things to contemplate. You can help a person find that. So don't give up hope and don't dismiss that. It, it, I'm not saying it's not your career. It can be a person's career. Absolutely, can be a person's career. Can can be their purpose. It's like, um, I don't know. You yourself are in the medical industry, being a surgeon could definitely be a life purpose, but it may also not be. It's a personal thing. It's how you feel. It's really that feeling of fulfillment, joy, passion, bliss, mm. connected to the world, mm. connected to everything. It's a feeling. So let's take that offline, Paul, and I'll discuss it with you further. But I'm just so proud yeah, of fine. you that you're able to articulate it and be so honest and transparent about it. So I really commend you. So thank you for sharing that because... People may have Same. heard you maybe here or in the recording and may say, yeah, I, I feel like that guy. I feel like, you know, and you helping people with your honesty and your openness. Yeah. Okay. I'll talk to you, you know, about other time. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So now for those of you who've joined us for the very first time, we do a guided meditation now. So what I'd like you to do is grab yourself a pen and a paper quickly. I'll give you a few minutes. And then you're going to sit in a comfortable position. I'm just going to grab a quick cup of water while you get a pen and paper. And then it's a guided meditation and we're going to reset the body and mind for the month of June. And we're going to set your intention for the month. So what do you want to focus on? Now, 
we're going to go into meditation first because when we deeply relax, I'm then going to tune you in to what I call your higher self or your intuition to get inspiration. And I'll do a 10 to 1 countdown. And then I'm going to ask you about three to four simple questions. Um, and I don't want you to judge what comes up for you. Just write it down. So the questions are, uh, what do I need to focus on for the month? What steps do I need to take? And what do I need to let go of? And I'll ask you is anything else. So just those questions. The thing is, I want people who've never done this before to learn. You can do this yourself. You can go into a deep, deep, relaxed state. Once you're very deep, count backwards from 10 to 1 and tell yourself you're tuning into whatever it is, your intuition, spirit, the divine, God, whatever it is for you to get you know, answers or to tune into your higher self. And you can ask yourself any question in that state and you will get much better and wiser answers, which I have to tell you are truth. So the answers you get tonight, they are truth. They are not the answers we get in a conscious state, like now when you're awake and your eyes are open. When you do, go deeply relaxed, the conscious mind kind of shuts down and um, I'm a much wiser place. Just relax now. I'm going to put my camera off just for the meantime. I'm going to mute uh, your microphone so there's no other noise. I'm going to put the song on. I'll just put a peaceful music. And you just follow the instructions, make sure that you're relaxed and you've got the pen and paper in your lap, easy to just jot answers down at the end. Okay, so find a comfortable position. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath and as you exhale, allow the tensions in your body to release and float away. Take another deep breath, and as you exhale, feel your body relaxing. Feel the tension leaving your scalp. Feel the tension leaving your forehead. Relax your eyes. Relax your cheeks. Relax your tongue and jaw. Relax your neck. Relax your shoulders, arms and hands. Take another deep breath, and as you exhale, feel the tension leaving your back. All the way down your spine. Relax your chest. Relax your abdomen. Take a deep breath into your belly. And as you exhale, feel your belly and your stomach relax. Relax your hips and pelvic area. Take another deep breath and allow the tension to leave your thighs. Relax your thighs, relax your knees, relax your calves, relax your feet all the way down to your toes. You are now experiencing a deep state of relaxation. Now you're going to create in your mind an ideal place of relaxation. It can be real or imagined, somewhere you've been or 
somewhere that you'd like to go and allow it to be a place where you feel totally relaxed. Begin to experience this place right now. Take your time. Now that you've created your ideal place of relaxation, you're going to add a waterfall of white light into the scene. Place it wherever you choose. The waterfall is gentle, allowing you to stand under the cascading white light. The light is a healing energy, a clearing energy, your waterfall of white light is now created. Walk over to the waterfall and stand under the white healing light. Allow the light to swirl around you, encompassing you within its glow. It is clearing the stress, the tension, and the clutter of the day away. Feel it clearing the stress, tension and clutter of not only the past week, the past month, but the past year. Now imagine it clearing the stress, tension and clutter of the lifetime from your energy field from your atmosphere, from your aura. As the light clears your energy field, just notice how much happier you look. Notice the smile on your face. See how the weights you've been carrying are no longer a burden. Notice how your energy field is expanding out as you are radiating love. This waterfall of light is always available to you. Whenever you need it. All you need to do is close your eyes and imagine your ideal place of relaxation and immerse yourself in this healing white light. Now take a deep breath, relax and go deeper and repeat these beneficial statements to yourself mentally. Every day, in every way, I am getting better, better and better. Positive thoughts, suggestions, and images bring me benefits and advantages I desire. I will always maintain a perfectly healthy body, mind, and immune system. The following statements are for your better health. Keep in mind, from now on, I will be speaking in your place. Every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every cell, tissue, organ and system of my body is revitalized, restored and renewed, resulting in a perfectly healthy body, mind and immune system. I'm able to function in harmony, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. My awareness in using my mind allows me to do activities that promote increased health physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. 
Now imagine the white light turns to green. You are now immersed in a glowing green light. This green light is unconditional love. It surrounds you. It encompasses you. It flows through your entire being. It fills you with love. All those hurts you felt, all those pains you felt, the angry moments, just allow this green light, this unconditional love, to heal all those spaces now. You are an amazing human being. You deserve love. You deserve joy. You deserve abundance and you deserve peace. It is now time to step out of the waterfall. Step out of the waterfall of light. Your energy field is now clean and clear. You are centered and energized. You are able to think more clearly, focus more easily. You are in the flow. The flow of universal love and energy. Take a moment now to bask in this feeling of connectedness. You have now reset your body and mind for the month. It is now time to set your intention for the month, the month of June. Tune in to your inner wisdom, your higher self, that part of you that if you tuned in, guides you and intuitively knows what is best for you. Feel the alignment with your higher self. Feel the connection. I'll now count backwards from 10 to 1. At the count of 1, you will have tuned in to your higher self, your intuitive self. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. You are, you are now tuned in to your higher self, the part of you that when you tuned in, guides you. It intuitively knows what's right for you. Now ask yourself the following questions. What do I need to focus on for the month of June? Whatever comes to mind, write it down. Don't analyze it, just write it down. And then take a deep breath when you're done and close your eyes and re-enter your calm state. The question is, what do I need to focus on for the month of June? Next question, what steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, do or have? Whatever comes to mind, write it down. What steps do I need to take to take me closer to what I want to be, do or have?
The next question, what do I need to let go of? Write down your first impressions. What do I need to let go of? And lastly, is there anything else I need to know? Is there anything else? Now, allow a deep breath and as you exhale, relax. Slowly bring your attention back into your body. Gently wiggle your fingers and toes. When you're ready, you can open your eyes and have a big stretch. Blessings to all of you. Okay, welcome back. I'm just going to unmute the mics if anyone wants to speak. You are on, no longer on mute. Was that helpful to anybody? Yes. Good. If anybody wants to share anything, they're welcome. I just want to remind you whatever answers you got are truth they are right for you so honor them and definitely follow the advice that you've received yes i receive like a lot of ideas you know of things that i can do and attitudes i should take wow that's wonderful especially about the attitudes you can take I mean, the idea is sure, of course, but that's interesting that it even came with attitudes. Yes. <laughs> interesting. Very good. <clears throat> Anyone who's new on this call, um, did you get anything that was helpful? What about you, Eva? Oh. Maybe she's on mute. All right. Well, if anyone wants to add anything, please do. For now, I'm going to stop the recording.